What is up you guys? So I wanted to take a second and show you guys how I made these truly awesome looking opalesque um, molds. I think they're completely beautiful and I will tell you where I got the molds from and what I used to create these. So stay tuned to see the whole process. What's up y'all? So I'm going to attempt to make some little mold things. I got this from LaCronk Creations. I have her link down in the description box below. And you can use the code that I have down there, which is for $20 off. Um, the resin I'm using today is Stone Coats Art Coat. You can get that from our store or you can get it from stonecoatcountertops.com and get $10 off of your $100 order by using the code YALL, Y-A-L-L, -L, no punctuation. Capitals. Oh, and all capitals. So... With this resin, it is a one-to-one. -one. That means you mix part A and part B equally. Don't forget when you are mixing your resin to stir it up fully and completely. For this amount of resin, it'll probably take me two minutes. Um, as you can see right now, it's kind of cloudy. Once it's fully incorporated into itself, it'll be really clear, super watery, but with just a few bubbles in it. Um, if I had any of these supercast casting epoxy from stone coat I would probably use that instead because it releases the air much more easily um, With a lot less heat and for a deep set mold like this one that would be pretty important However, I don't have any so we're gonna make do with what we got right right um, this resin is super awesome though, the art coat from Stone Coat Countertops because it withstands up to 500 degrees Fahrenheit. It's scratch resistant, chemical resistant, water resistant, and it's highly UV resistant, which means that it will be a good hot minute if it's gonna yellow. It'll take forever for it to do so. And it really only will yellow if you put it out in direct sunlight for hot minute. I've done tests myself. I haven't had a piece yellow on me yet. That's not to say that it's impossible for it to yellow. There are many different factors that can contribute to the yellowing of your epoxy. So when you're mixing this up, make sure you scrape the sides, the bottom, and your stir stick. I'm using one of our Artist Till Death stir sticks, also available on our website, artisttilldeath.com. You'll notice a lot of bubbles get mixed in when you're stirring the part A and part B, but when you add heat to it, that'll release the bubbles because it thins out your resin. And if you're using a casting epoxy, it's relatively self-releasing. It's got a degassing agent or something in it. I don't know. Maybe there's a splash of Pepto. I don't know. Just a pinch. So I think I'm going to add just a little bit of glitter. For this, I'm going to use my Halo glitter from Just Resin. We have this available on our website. I'm not going to use a lot because I don't want to cloud up my resin. I just want to add a hint of sparkle, right? Right. Like just ever so slight i don't even know if you guys can see it on the camera as of yet Ugh. just a little bit of sparkle then i'm going to also add a little bit of my resin art Powder. This is Bling It Oyster, but I don't want to use this one. I want to use my Violet. 
that is somewhere here. Do you see my... What are you looking for? This, but in violet. Literally yesterday. Well, so this is from Resin Art. I'm going to just add enough to make it slightly cloudy and shimmery. Because if you think about it, opals are a little bit hazy, but you can still see through it. If I was mixing this into a casting epoxy, it would take a little bit longer to mix in because it's um, thinner. But with this, it works just fine. Some of that in there. I'm sure I'll have some left over. I'll add it to the. Now that I have my resin mixed, all nice. Oh my God, it's literally right in front of me. Y'all, I'm losing it. So I'm gonna add a tiny bit of this too because I want it to have that purple sparkle. I'm losing it. All right. That's what I'm looking for. All right. So the next thing you're gonna need is some cellophane. This I got off Amazon. I'm pretty sure I have it linked down in the description box below this video. I went ahead and pre-crumpled it because it came in a really pristine, nice sheet. But I think when you crumple it, it gives it that, that look and it reflects color better. So I'm just gonna cut off a few little streamers of it and a few big pieces. You don't really need that much. So first thing, I'm going to crumple this up and put it down into the little the big, I don't want to call it a big hole, but the biggest gem that's in there. I'm also going to take some fine point tweezers and squish a little bit of it into these finer, the small little um, crystals. Just taking the little shards that came off when I cut the cellophane. Ooh, this will be perfect for this one. All right. Just so that I'm sure that it reflects all the way up into the, the stone. There we go. I think we got all those. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and add some of my resin. I'm not gonna fill it up just yet. I just, cause I want to like pre-coat everything and squish it around and make sure that it's, there's no bubbles caught in there. That's why when I put my cellophane in there, I crumpled it like tube style and not just in a ball. Cause I don't want it to catch any air. If air gets caught into it, it's gonna make it a little bit more cloudy and bubbly. And that's not gonna give us the look that we really want. 
So I'm just rolling this around to make sure that it's all lubricated. Ugh, what's a horrible word? And I'm just dropping it a couple times to express some of the bubbles. This is less necessary if you have a casting epoxy. I'm gonna put a little bit more in there and a little bit more of this. side crumple. There we go. Layer. Side crumple. Give up. Get in there. There we go. Now hopefully doing it this way gives less room for it to float out because if it floats out you're gonna have to sand it down later there we go make sure all the bubbles are out I do have a couple little bits that are floating up so I'm gonna have to babysit that and come back in a little while and push it down which is fine or just like tuck it into one of those ridges where the points are. That way it doesn't have anything to float to. So I'm also going to hit it with a little bit of heat to pop any surface bubbles. When you do this, be careful that you don't hit any of your mold because if you melt any of it, you're gonna have a hard time getting your um, mold to free, freely come out. So then I also have this little druzy mold I want to do as well. Now that those are sticky, I'm going to have to switch out my tweezers. This is a lot more difficult than I thought it would be to get this little stuff in there. I'm trying to tuck it under this rim so that I don't have issues with it floating up. That's, that's what I'm doing right now. All right. This little guy takes a lot less resin. Boop, 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 boop. Make sure all of my cellophane is coated. We're all in every crevice. Ooh, that's a horrible word too. I'm just dropping all the gross words today. Also make sure your mold is full because if it's not full, you'll have more issues trying to get it out of the mold. And I'm gonna put this on here as well because I want it to be sparkly into the little glass areas down there. And I'll trim up this, this little area later so that it's cut exactly the size. I didn't release the bubbles. Hopefully that'll work out well. Anyways, stay tuned. See how it turns out. Bye.